Today's talk, drugs which may predispose to dementia and cause cognitive and memory problems. As a general rule, drugs which affect a neurotransmitter acetylcholine, histamine, dopamine, GABA, glutamic acid, affect memory and cognition. Other things that lower your brain's oxygen levels, its sugar levels, decrease neuronal transmission, interfere with absorption of B1, B2, and you know, B1, B6, and B12, thiamine, riboflavin, and methylcobalamin, and cholesterol cause memory problems. I'm not going to talk about alcohol, marijuana. They cause memory, cognitive problems, and they can pre predispose you to dementia. So those are drugs of abuse that I'm not, I'm not going to get into because I've done it so many times. So let's start with anti-anxiety drugs, which slash could be drugs of abuse. Anti-anxiety drugs, benzodiazepines, are notorious for causing cognitive problems and problems that predispose you to dementia. Drugs in this class, Xanax, Alprazolam, Lorazepam, Ativan, Clonazepam, Clonopin, Versed, Midazolam, Restoril, Temazepam, Dalmane, Florazepam, Librium, Chlorazepate, the list goes on, Triazolam, depending on their half-life is pretty much how we discriminate with these drugs. Longer acting ones, medium acting ones, shorter acting ones, I gave a lecture on it. Just remember, these drugs affect GABA. Drugs that affect GABA cause memory problems and may predispose an individual to dementia, cognitive problems. That's class two. Class three, anti-cholesterol drugs. These are one of the most prescribed drugs in America. Lipitor, Lescol, Mevacor, Provacol, Crestor, Zocor. Those are the brand names. These are very common drugs. Cholesterol is a building block of the brain. Without it, your brain is deprived of what it needs to build its structure. The generic names for these drugs, atravastin, fluvastatin, lovastatin, prevastatin, rosuvastatin, simvastatin, anything with a statin lowers cholesterol. They brand name them by or. Lipitor, Les, uh, Lescor, Mavacor, Prevacol, Crestor, Zocor. So it's either, I meant to say Lescol, either it ends in a call or an or. So that would be the third class. The fourth class, anti-seizures. Now, what is the reason these would cause problems, cognition, and dementia? They slow the brain down. Seizures are a hyperactive brain, an excited brain, abnormal firing, depolarization, waves of depolarization throughout the brain, and that was what results in a seizure. The common names for these drugs, Diamox, Tegretol, Potiga, Neurontin, Lamictal, Keppra, Triliptal, Lyrica, Ponsal, Topamax, Depakote, Zonogram. They have generic names, acetazolamide, Carbamazepine, I don't know, do I need to go through the list? Um, let's go to antidepressants. The older antidepressants, and they're used for depression or anxiety, but the older ones, what they do is they block acetylcholine, like amitriptyline, clomipramine, desipramine, doxepin, imipramine, nortriptyline, protriptyline, triamine, those drugs block acetylcholine. And remember, acetylcholine is a critical neurotransmitter which is involved in memory formation in the hippocampus in your brain. So this class of drugs is also predisposed to dementia and memory problems. The sixth class, which technically is legal drugs, opiates, but it can also be illegal drugs like heroin. But opiates affect the opiate receptor and downstream effect norepinephrine, epinephrine, which are neurotransmitters that are responsible for uh, cognition and memory. 
We know these drugs, hydrocodone, oxycodone, heroin, morphine, uh, hydromorphone, dilated, fentanyl, carfentanyl. Um, so we, we've got that. The seventh class would be anti-Parkinsonian drugs. There are two types. The anticholinergic drugs for Parkinson's disease, which is a motor disorder where uh, you have trouble moving, dementia, you have a shuffling gait, mask, facies, tremors. It's disabling and eventually terminal disorder. But benztropine, which is cogentin, trioxyphenidyl, which is artane, are anticholinergic. So just like the antidepressants that I mentioned, it blocks acetylcholine, which can cause dementia. But it, dopamine, apomorphine, uh, primapexol, ropinerol, these are dopamine agonies, which are used in Parkinson, can also affect neurotransmission in the formation of memories. Antihypertensives are another one, which downstream affect norepinephrine and epinephrine. Anything that ends in olol, atenolol, carvedilol, metaprolol, propranolol, timolol, satolol, all those drugs affect memory and cognition and predispose to dementia. Another class, these are the non-benzodiazepine sleep aids, common one, Ambien, Zolpidem, uh, Zopaclone, which is Lunesta, Zolpidem, which is Sonata. These drugs aren't full, direct-acting GABA stimulators. They're partial. They partially affect the GABA receptor, but they can cause memory problems and predispose to dementia. The incontinence drugs are also acetylcholine drugs. They, they, they block acetylcholine. Acetylcholine is part of the parasympathetic system in our, our body, and that's the rest and digest system. And this blocks that. So any drug that ends in, it sounds like darfenacin, oxybutynin, solifenacin, tolteridine, trisposium, uh, they block this muscarinic receptor, which is a type of cholinergic receptor, but they also block other acetylcholine, acetylcholine re receptors like the M1 muscarinic receptor in your brain, causing dementia and memory problems. So incontinence drugs. See, a lot of drugs are affecting our central nervous system. And it's scary because these are the most common drugs in America. Wait till I continue with my list. The next one, uh, this is what, the tw the 10th class, the, this is the 11th class. This is the most frustrating one for me because this is the most common one. The biggest culprit in the antihistamine class is diphenhydramine. Diphenhydramine, Tylenol PM, uh, Benadryl, Motrin PM. People use it for sleep. sleep. It's, it's an antihistamine but it also has anticholinergic effects. It blocks acetylcholine, causing memory problems, predisposing to dementia. There's over-the-counter cold medicines, uh, Dimetab, Clistin, Clortrimetron, Tavis, uh, one for anxiety, Hydroxine is Vistaril. But these contain first-generation antihistamines, Bromphenyramine, uh, Carbenifenyramine, Clomphenyramine, clemestine, diphenhydramine, hydroxazine, doxylamine is unisom. That's for sleep. First generation antihistamines, no good. I did a whole lecture on histamines. Histamine is important for memory formation. If you block it, you also block formation of memories in the hippocampus. Histamine is critical. And these drugs First generations cross the blood-brain barrier and get into your central nervous system and affect memory formation. Be careful with over-the-counter cold medicines. Now, all antihistamines are not bad. Remember, it was the first generations, one that cross over the blood-brain barrier and get into your brain. They were very fat-loving, uh, lipophilic. But they're the newer generations, the second generation antihistamines like Claritin, Loretidine, Clarinex, uh, Desloratidine, uh, Zyrtec was uh, Cetirazine, 
and what was the other one? Uh, Allegra phenylphexidine. Those are okay because they don't enter your brain and they don't cause antihistamine and anti-acetylcholine, anticholinergic properties. The next class, the anti-motion sickness class, uh, the anti-nausea class, uh, scopolamine, promethazine, meclizine, they go by names, uh, transderm, uh, phenergan, which is promethazine, meclizine is antivert. Um, so they can be anticholinergic. What's the next class would be, I guess, class 13, lithium. Lithium is a mood stabilizer. So psychiatrists, we wind up using all these drugs, which is extremely stressful. So I'm using drugs which actually cause memory problems, cognition problems, and pre can increase risk of dementia. Lithium is a mood stabilizer. It sort of slows neural transmission, uh, stabilizes mood. Problem with that one. Muscle relaxants, 14. Cyclobenzaprine, like Flexril, anticholinergic, anti-acetylcholine. Antispasmatics, first generation, um, can also cause memory, cognitive problems, and predispose to dementia. The first generation antipsychotics, Melaril, chlorpromazine, perfenazine, flufenazine, haldol, thorazine, trifluoroperazine, those drugs all have anticholinergic properties. There's also classes of drugs that I'm worried about that are very common. Cimetidine, ranitidine, famotidine. Um, they have anticholinergic properties. They're used for, they're antacids. They're used for gastroesophageal reflux disease, ulcer disease. They block acetylcholine. They can cause, predisposed to dementia, cause memory problems. He, there's other classes too for completeness. And I, I researched this to try and get a complete list. I think I've covered everything, but there are ones which people use every day. Naproxen, um, that's a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug, naproxen sodium, I forgot the brand name, but that may cause memory problems. Barbiturates, secanol, um, butalbital, phenobarbital, chemotherapy drugs, drugs used to treat cancer, Interferon, steroids, prednisone, mednithylprednisolone, quinidine, insulin. Remember, it lowers blood sugar. Lowering blood sugar can affect memory. It's unsettling that the most common drugs we use in America, and I've listed, most of these appear on the top 10 list, cause cognitive problems and predisposed to dementia. I hope this helped everyone and I hope people can find alternatives by speaking with their doctor. Don't just stop it. Speak to your doctor and see if you can find one that is less problematic for your memory, cognition, and predisposing you to dementia. This is Dr. Mark Agresti. Thank you.